Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing an introduction to the Dragon's Lair. So the Dragon's Lair is one of the dungeons in the game that you acquire some of the best uh, artifact sets in the game. And now this is a dungeon that you definitely want to make one of the first priorities if you're a beginner or mid game you're getting close to mid game this is definitely a dungeon that you want to progress in to at least level 16 so you can start farming uh the gear that's going to take you into that late mid game that's going to push you into that get closer and closer to late game and get you more progressed in other dungeons like spider ice golem fire knight you need good gear on your champions in order to progress in this game it's a must you have to grind dragon eventually eventually you're going to have to come in here you're gonna have to get about 2,000 energy this is what I recommend to people you're gonna have to get about 2,000 energy and you're just gonna have to set up an auto farm overnight on dragon because you just need these especially especially lifesteal artifacts they're so key speed artifacts accuracy uh, destroy toxic frost and days aren't as important but you will get other pieces of gear to give an offset piece which means you can use single pieces from other sets in order to get the stats that you need on your champion so grinding dragon is so important so let's get into the actual dungeon and see how it works so as you can see here my team is Siffy, miscreated monster tayrell royal guard and cold heart i could use a poisoner as well in place of maybe miscreated or someone like that but which poison is useful in dragon but i like taking miscreated because he gives that big old shield he stuns it's good crowd control when someone when the enemy is stunned especially when you get to level 20 because these these characters hit so hard on level 20 it's crazy sometimes they kill my guys like you'll probably see my cold heart and one of my champions die here because they are so strong especially these hordens these two guys on the outside these hordens they hit super hard and if they kill one of your champions they'll, they'll i believe they'll get an extra turn so i keep miscreated he he keeps my team alive but i also have tayrell for his defense down and then i have royal guard for his hp ability he, he does more damage based off of the dragon maximum hp dragon has a lot of hp and the same with cold heart with her heart seeker and that also has some turn meter control too so the dragon's taking less turns and then siffy obviously for her heals and her resurrection and her speed and defense and what does what doesn't Siffy, Siffy, do. Wow. Obviously, so she's constantly providing buffs. Miss Created's providing buffs. Now, we're just gonna stop here on the dragon, and we're just gonna go through his abilities real quick, so you guys can kind of get to know, get to know the dragon a little bit. What it, what is it? Smog from the Hobbit. That's that's what I like to call him because it's it's similar to the Hobbit because he has his all his gold around him. But anyways. He has the almighty immunity, obviously. You can't stun, freeze, sleep, provoke, block, cooldown, fear, or true fear. And no HP exchange effects, HP balancing effects, and cooldown increasing effects. So most all of the dungeon bosses have some sort of almighty immunity. And you can't stun them, freeze them, things like that. They have this almighty immunity. And others have other different traits like spider you can't put heal you can't put a heal reduction on spider all right let's talk about his first ability which is scorch this ability attacks all enemies and places a stun for one turn and it says this skill will be locked and hidden again if the dragon takes enough damage while this skill is unlocked so this is a skill that does a lot of damage and it stuns which is really important to know because when you're stunned you lose your turn you lose a turn on one of your champions completely his next ability is called inhale now this is when the dragon perches up and like he's looking down on you and you're in it's, it's kind of interesting to see um 
but it fully depletes the target's t turn meter and unlocks the secret skill, which is Scorch. You obviously won't see that, but when he inhales, he also has a shield. It's like this purple shield that activates as well that he uses throughout the game. And, and I'll play the, or throughout the dungeon, and I'll play this through to show you guys the ability that he uses, the abilities that he uses. Next ability is Wall of Fire. This attacks all enemies and places two 5% poison debuffs for three turns and a 25% weaken debuff for two turns. So this hits pretty hard. It puts poison and weaken. Uh, the poison does straight damage to your HP and the weaken causes you to take more damage from the dragon. And then finally we have swipe, which this is, he just like hits everyone. He attacks all enemies and does a decrease attack debuff for two turns. So already we're going to start to see that having a block debuff champion like Siffy, like Marked, like Maneater, people like that are going to be really key and really essential in this dungeon because they're going to block the this decreased attack, this poison, this weakness, uh, this stun. They're going to block those things and help. Whoops, I didn't mean to hit that. Oh my gosh. Anyways, they're going to block those things and prevent your team from getting those debuffs placed on especially the decreased attack kind of sucks because it just it causes you to do the dungeon slower you want to do this dungeon as fast as you possibly can so you can farm as much as as much and as efficiently as you can in this game and so having a block debuff champion is great also having an increased defense champion i usually tend to like to go with like two supports one person with some uh with some with some defense down and attack down that's my tayrell and then two damage dealers so essentially that's what you want to look for when you're building you want some people who can do the defense down so that the enemies take more damage you want some people who hit really hard so you can get through those trash mobs really quick. That defense down is going to help with those trash mobs and help you get past them and not die to them because they're going to take more damage. And like I said earlier, having this miscreated, having that, that AOE stun helps so much because it takes a turn away from those trash mobs and it causes them to take more damage and... If you have some abilities on your other champions from Masteries that decrease the turn meter, then that helps as well. So you're essentially manipulating the turn meter of the trash mobs to where they don't take a lot of turns and they take a ton of damage. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let this play through so you guys can see just how the mechanics go with my team and just how it works and just see how things flow with it. So I'm just going to put it on auto. I'm just going to let it run. Now my miscreated shields are obviously aren't that great here because he's not attacking multiple people, but he does still use his, his ally protect, which is really nice. And it puts a heal on him as well. You can see the dragon still hitting me pretty hard, but uh, my Royal guard just chunked the dragon so good. You can see this dragon's health is already down way like three fourths of the way almost already and it's only been a couple turns that they've gone and now there he goes again with the same thing and even my Tayrell hits pretty hard and he's keeping that defense down and that attack down on the dragon as well so you could see that I made quick work of the dragon Tayrell did almost a mil Coldheart did a million damage Royal Guard did 1.6 million damage and even Miscreated Monster is putting in a little bit of damage there too and so you can see that this team works good together. I have my support here from Siffy and Miscreated Monster. I have my two damage dealers. And then I have my defense down champion, which is my Tayrell, my AoE defense down. That's super important, guys, because, and not only in this uh, dungeon, but all dungeons that have trash mob waves and even the spider dungeon, you always want defense down, the greater defense down. 
whether that be with a war maiden which you can farm from campaign or a zargala or just anyone who can use that ability you really want to include them on your team my Tyrell, he's more he's more built for clan boss but he still does really good damage here in the dungeons and i use him in all these dungeons that i play in or or most of my dungeon i don't think i use him in every dungeon because i don't think i use him in my spider dungeon because it's just different mechanics for the spider dungeon and i have different teams that i use everywhere but i do always make sure i have someone like him like i said that has that defense down so that is it guys for the introduction to the dragon's lair like i said this is one of the most important dungeons in this game because it gives you the really necessary gear pieces that you need not saying that there's necessary gear pieces from ice golem especially spider because spider gives you your accessories but when we're talking early game trying to go into mid game dragon's lair is going to be the best one so i would suggest if you can get to at least dragons 13 and start farming for some four five six star gear obviously you're, you're only getting four to six star gear but that's going to help you or if you can push to dragon 16 which dragon 16 is also void affinity which is nice because nobody's hitting critic like strong hits on you as far as the trash mobs go and the dragon goes if you can get to 16 the bruise and the mystery shards stop dropping from this stage at 16 so this would be a good goal i farm dragon 16 for a while and i honestly haven't done a whole lot of farming on dragon 20 and i'm pretty into the mid game as far as where i'm at currently i know that i need to do dragon 20 in order for me to get to or even want to think about late game but still that's where i'm at guys and that is your introduction to the dragon's lair so let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you in the next